5 Worldview Enterprises Inc. Corporate Headquarters in the County Aerospace Defense and Technology Research and Business uh, Park. There's items 1 and 2. Um, Mr. Huckleberry, did you, we have a number of speakers, did you want to make some comments initially? Yes, yes Madam Chair. The um, item you have before you is a lease purchase agreement uh, for a uh, car and property owned by the county in what uh, we've uh, identified as our aerospace uh, defense technology business and research park, approximately uh, 12 acres uh, included in this purchase uh, that will include a building that will be constructed by the county, which is a manufacturing administration and engineering building for the world view. Uh, the terms and conditions are overall spelled out in the agreement. Uh, the lease purchase uh, provides an option uh, to purchase uh, the improvements in the property beginning in the ninth year, continuing to the 17th year of the lease. Uh, the uh, purchase price would be all of the financial commitments of the county um, and the remaining principal that would be owed at the time, all of the uh, interest that had been advanced, and then uh, interest on uh, the advancement of certain county funds uh, during the lease purchase agreement and the terms of the rent. We um, believe that uh, we've looked at Worldview for some time and been working uh, with the firm for approximately six months uh, in determining where they would locate uh, their headquarters and their manufacturing facilities. Uh, we competed uh, with a number of states, primarily Florida and New Mexico, uh, in this process. Uh, they have uh, chosen uh, Tucson uh, to become their world headquarters in manufacturing of the products that they develop for uh, near space exploration including uh, certain specific applications with regard to defense as well as communications technology. Uh, this adds a space dimension to our aerospace uh, embedded uh, economic development activities within the community. Uh, we have checked and we know that uh, their activities uh, including the construction of a spaceport is fully compatible with Raytheon's uh, activities, and Raytheon is very aware of the building, the size, and location, and the spaceport, and uh, has uh, given their approval of the uh, property and its development, and that it is compatible with their operations. Uh, they will grow from 25 employees to over 400 in about three to four years, and they will pay a wage, which is 150% of the median wage uh, in, in the county. So they um, will have uh, an activity that uh, is beneficial economically. We've provided the material, the economic development analysis and the economic report that, that has uh, accompanies the proposal. And this proposal is very similar to something uh, the county entered into about three or four years ago with Accelerate Diagnostics, where we provided space within our building uh, and actually fronted uh, the uh, payment of um, tenant improvements for accelerated diagnostics uh, and uh, they have at this point in time in their six year lease, their three year exam, they repaid fully uh, the tenant improvements and paid all the expenses within the building and uh, have uh, already contributed about $200 million to the economy. So this is a similar activity and um, I think we have obviously the principals here who can give you more specifics about uh, their operations and their plans, and we can answer any questions the board has with regard to uh, the documents, and I recommend that all the five items listed in the addendum agenda be approved, uh, and uh, that concludes my report. All right. There we go. Uh, if I could ask Jane Poignier, and then I think Tabor, if you would like to come and make, I understand you wish to make a presentation at this point. Please, as you come up, state your name uh, for the record. Tabor McCullough. It's a Jane Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chairwoman. Hema County Board of Supervisors, County Huckleberry, County Administrator Huckleberry. I'm Jane Pointer, CEO and co-founder of World Enterprises. And with me is Tabor McCallum, our Chief Technology Officer and also a co-founder. 
Together with our globally recognized board of directors, we are enormously proud to work with you and request your affirmative vote on Project Curvature today. We're excited to announce that after a rigorous and highly competitive national site selection process, Worldview has chosen Arizona, and in particular, the County Aerospace Defense and Technology Research and Business Park for our global headquarters as we expand our market reach and worldwide operations. The action before you today is the result of Worldview staff working closely for over nine months with Pima County, the Arizona Commerce Authority, the City of Tucson, the City of Page, Sun Corridor, Tucson International Airport, among others. At Worldview, we are pioneering space flight using proprietary high-altitude balloon technologies. We are most known by the public as a company that will soon take people to space in the comfort of a sealed capsule. What is less known is our robotic flight business that uses our balloon technology as a satellite, orbiting the planets or hovering over a single location for many months. Instead of flying a capsule for people, we will fly instruments for communications, weather, surveillance, first response, military applications, and research. The markets for this technology are numerous and huge, and we already fly payloads for NASA, Northrop Grumman, universities, and others. Holding records in high-altitude flight and ballooning, I am proud to say that our hardware is now in the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. The company is backed by an international group of investors who are industry captains in technology, travel, and finance. The firm has already brought over $30 million in balloon technology development development to Arizona, mostly spent on jobs here in Tucson and Arizona-based suppliers. With the future invested capital and rapidly growing business base, we plan to grow the company to over 400 jobs in high-tech engineering and manufacturing. Clearly, this will help stimulate our regional economy, and we are committed to continuing to hire local and state suppliers to the fullest extent possible. Our nationwide location search was extensive. In Tucson, there are no buildings of the size and quality that meet the needs of a growing high-tech manufacturing company. We determined that the best location to build is in the Aerospace and Defense Corridor, strategically close, located near the airport and Raytheon. It is also an excellent place from where to launch, making the co-location with Spaceport Tucson attractive. As a public asset, the Spaceport um, Worldview is in a, a, a very high-growth business. Uh, it's, uh, there's just a lot of opportunities for us, and um, we're, we're anticipating um, a great deal of success. Uh, we, um, along with the 400 jobs, which of course is uh, pretty good, we're excited to be able to bring 400 jobs here. Um, we also uh, use um, uh, local suppliers everywhere we can. Um, so that's hundreds of millions of dollars worth of business that we will be spending right here in, in our uh, local community. Um, and uh, do you want to add anything to that? No, I think that's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, Jan Tabert, um, I think uh, probably the, when we do a venture of this size, uh, there's a, there are many investors involved, and I think it would certainly... <coughs> I think part of what we need to hear, I mean, many of those investors uh, probably are very, very successful and are clearly not into taking the loss in business. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the some of the, the investors? Right, the investors, because yes. I think it would help some members of this board feel more comfortable, because obviously we've got investors that are very, they're very good investors and they mm. clearly have a strong record of uh, uh, investing in successful businesses that, uh, that obviously lends itself to, to credibility. Madam Chairwoman, thank you for that question. Yes, so we, uh, we're very proud of our investors. So we have uh, an investor group from around the world uh, that um, include uh, one of the largest uh, internet companies in the world um, that, are extreme, that is extremely interested in this area, um, uh, Tencent. Uh, and uh, we also have institutional investors that are well known uh, in, uh, in the US. Um, Silicon Valley, in particular. Uh, we have investors from Europe uh, and, uh, of course, all over the U.S. Uh, so it, it's a very strong group of investors. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Jane, and uh, I mean, obviously it goes without saying, but I want to go ahead and say it just so it's understood. These are folks that are very used to investing in 
Mediocre companies successful? They expect to get a very high rate of return. Yes. <laughs> so very successful yes. companies. Yes, exactly. They, they, uh, they are absolutely dedicated to um, investing in, in extremely successful businesses that are going into areas of uh, high growth, disruption, a great deal of innovation, and uh, really bringing new products to market uh, that we really haven't seen before that can make an enormous difference, not only in business, but also in, in the world. Yes, uh, Madam Chairwoman, or Supervisors, Administrator Herb Berry. Uh, the, the process that we go through in getting these investors is worth noting. Uh, they hire independent uh, organizations to do due diligence, to look at the business plan, to look at the technology, uh, they go through the team, uh, a lot of the scrubbing of the company, that these, these uh, due diligence uh, teams spend days with us, they do independent research, file independent reports. So uh, this isn't a, uh, a, an investment made to win by a high, well field individual. These are investments made by institutional organizations whose job it is to bring return to their shareholders. And the wire scrubbing they give us is <laughs> phenomenal. So. Uh, I think you can sort of rest assured that uh, the backing that we bring and the investment that we bring into the state from these investors, this is money coming into our state from outside, so it's fresh money into our economy uh, is a significant, and I, I think your, your point is well made. Thank you. Thank you, Mentor. Thank you, Jennifer. And to that point, um, you have a lot of institutional investors. Should the county board vote to invest? Tell us why we should do that. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, or the Supervisors Administrator, Uncle Barry. Because as you know, we're res the, we, we are responsible to the taxpayers of this community, so let's hear from you why this is a good deal for ta taxpayers. Um, I think looking at the, the broad perspective of economic developments in our community, what we find coming out of the Great Recession is that communities that invest in economic development, that invest in their own communities, they're the ones that are growing and successful. You see this in Florida with an incredible economic resurgence. You see this going on in southern New Mexico, Texas, which is a, a, one of the, the states that work very hard to, to win our, uh, our headquarters. So uh, investing uh, with this program, which I believe has uh, lots of protections for the county, uh, is really fundamental to growing our community, to bringing the types of jobs we have here, uh, we need here, the diversified economy, both manufacturing and engineering, I think it is it's a fundamental responsibility of the community. In this day and age, things are changing after the great economy. If not for the kind of public-private partnerships that are being proposed here, uh, other states compete. It's, a, it's an incredibly competitive environment. And if we don't compete as a community to bring us and many other jobs uh, and companies like us here, our community will not grow and prosper the way we need it to. Thank you. Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller. Um, well, I, I think Supervisor Elias has to be recognized first. <laughs> yeah, actually, he did. I appreciate it. I just like to follow up. You said you have these institutional investors from Europe and the United States, and that they expect a very high rate of return. When you look into your business plans. I'd like yes. to look into your business plans for the taxpayers on behalf of the taxpayers, and we did not get that. I'm just taking your word up here. I mean, it's really nice to hear you say, yes, it's going to be great. Yes, I know it's going to be great. But I'm not hearing, I'm not seeing the data. I'm not seeing, I'm, I can't just take your word on that you're going to bring this great return on balloons not going, you know, just going up 100,000 feet. And, you know, why are why haven't you given that data to me to analyze, to look into? I'm a finance person, so I like looking into these things. And I would give you the same I mean, you can understand my frustration. You're asking me to vote to invest taxpayer money with no information. Go to your website. It's just you know, a, a very simple website without a whole lot of projections on what you're gonna do. I mean, it looks like it was recently created, as a matter of fact. And I'm just not seeing a whole lot of detail on the type of company you have, the type of uh, information that should be out there on a website of a company that is high-tech producing product 
and where you're going in the future and what your projections are and who is interested in investing in your company. There's no data there whatsoever on who the investors are. Um, I, I, I just really find it very frustrating. I, noon on Friday, folks, I was given the information to vote on this and not even five days. And, uh, and it appears, I'd like to know who knew about this for nine, six to nine months. And a contract was agreed to in December. You, ex you wrote an acceptance letter. And I'm very uh, stunned that this board is supposed to be meeting in public meetings um, and uh, voting together on, and analyzing this. And it appears this was all done without at least one board member knowing anything about it at all. Um, very frustrating. Um, and, and again, if you have a list of, uh, if you have your business plan, I'd love to look at it even right now. Do you have it with you? Chairman, no, I'm sorry. If you don't have it with us, I, I would be happy to set up the meeting with you, though. Thank you. Supervisor Lee? Go ahead. All right. After that, I'll wait for a while. Okay. Madam Supervisor Carroll, did you know? Madam Chair? Su Ms. Supervisor. Uh, just a little bit of a point of clarification, and I'd like Mr. Huckleberry to respond. Um, Mr. Huckleberry, I believe we've had a number of, of economic development uh, opportunities that this board has voted on over the last three years to be inclusive of all colleagues here on, on the stage today. Um, and I believe in many of those cases, the negotiations were done in, in a very similar manner uh, with all economic development uh, entities in the state and in the region. Um, could you please elaborate, was this done any different than before? I believe at least Home Goods, I think, got a unanimous vote. So could you share that with me? Yeah, maybe I'm just mistaken. Yes, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, we, in actually talking to firms who want to relocate here or expand here, are typically under a non-disclosure agreement, which simply says that uh, we're competing, we're competing with others, and that uh, what we do is, is really uh, in that firm's interest uh, to ensure that uh, where they're either moving from doesn't understand or doesn't uh, cause chaos uh, or that the fact that their business plan uh, that they have that they're actually advancing is uh, not disclosed to their competitors. And so this is no different than every economic development activity we undertake. Now, it goes by all code names. And this particular code name is Project Curvature. Uh, I will talk later today with Project uh, COVID, and so those are uh, very similar activities that are occurring on a regular basis. <coughs> Madam Chair, Mr. Elkberry, just uh, and I heard you say it already, but I wanted in a simple yes or no answer so that it's very clear. Was this project conducted in any different manner than every single economic development project that has come before this board in the last three years? Uh, Madam Chair, member of the board, no, it was not. Mr. Huckleberry, just as a follow-up, um, in previous economic development opportunities we have um, accepted, uh, what guarantee do we have that there will be performance? Is is with Worldview? Is is there some guarantee in the contract we will be should we move forward with? Is there some guarantee that the county has protection? Uh, Madam Chair and uh, members of the board, the property remains the counties as well as the building is the counties until uh, a uh, purchase agreement is executed by the worldview. Uh, and uh, they're obligated to make rent payments and, uh, and, and basically pay all operating expenses associated with the facility itself. And should they default at any time, we simply get uh, all the property back including any uh, rent they would have paid that paid down the principal or interest on, on the debt. So that's, uh, that's our uh, quote uh, guarantee that we would then take the property back and remarket it to a similar or different manufacturer of, uh, of uh, we'll say, aerospace technology. Thank you, Madam Chair. Supervisor. I had some questions for Mr. Huckleberry. Is it appropriate at this time? Well, I, I, I think yes, she, he had the floor and then proceed to you. First off, I want to welcome both of you. I hope that you to change the tone here and say thank you for being here. Uh, obviously, we know your success in Paragon. 
ventures. I also know your success and your reputation because I've done some research on you from the time that I found out uh, that you were the, the company that was coding Project Curvature. The, uh, the important thing is your track record speaks for itself, and I'm glad you're here. You're space pioneers. I'm grateful for your attendance at today's meeting. And you're used to the scouring, I, I, I heard you say earlier, so I, do, I just want to say on behalf of the taxpayers, it's important for us to try to collaborate with you at this point, this public hearing. The, um, the track record for our economic development team over the past few years has been, I think, phenomenal with ex Accelerate, Home Goods, other companies that are currently in our pipeline. Uh, we realize that um, your execution of this contract goes back to your, your investors and your board of directors. Can you, uh, your local board of directors and um, other members, are there, I know you have some people representing you like Alex Rodriguez and others from, from Pima County, but all of these jobs will be mostly uh, homegrown in Pima County as your other parallel ventures. What was the, what was the, in, the percentage of imported workers compared to the ones you grew and, and, uh, and developed right here in Pima County, and how can we help if this is the case? Madam Chair, um, members of the board, uh, County Administrator. So, um, with our jobs, uh, the 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 future jobs we anticipate will be predominantly from the local area. Uh, there are good manufacturing jobs that I think uh, we have a community that is uh, very well suited to supply those, uh, those employees to us. Um, I will say that in areas where we have struggled a little, as in the engineering jobs, we do have to import some of those jobs. Um, but we do expect that the lion's share of our employees will come from right here. Thank you, and once again, I appreciate you being here. I've spoken to many people uh, this and last week that uh, have great confidence in what you're attempting to do, and they also reminded me that the majority of your income is going to continue to be uh, scientific research and development, supporting the troops, as you mentioned, in places that really don't have accurate power or uh, ability to catch radar. So thank you again. Uh, I'm grateful that you're here. I hope uh, you, you have great success in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Supervising um, Madam Chair, um, these questions are for Mr. Huckleberry. Um, on page 9 of your January 19th memo, um, I don't know if you want to turn to that, it's, you, you discuss uh, the Swayman Associates contract and the Barker Morrissey, that it, you said that they've been working on this for months. Um, <clears throat> and then you have a, a statement in there that the county will now pay all fees estimated at approximately a million dollars as well as non-governmental utility extensions est <clears throat> extensions estimated at 700,000 is that in addition to the 15 million madam chair and supervisor Miller that is included within the 14.5 million dollars of the purchase okay and <clears throat> so that's one. The other question I have is regarding the emergency procurement procedures that you're invoking to sole source this. <coughs> um, because you said the compliance with the statutes is impracticable. How so? Uh, Madam Chair, um, the members of the board, uh, worldview needs to be operational in the new facility November of 16. Uh, that is 10 months from now, and therefore it required an accelerated design and construction schedule. And why is it that they have to be operational by November of 2016? What type of emergency are we invoking here? Madam Chair and uh, Supervisor Miller, probably they can answer that better, but I think they have actual contracts that they must deliver on. Is that correct? You have actual contracts? <clears throat> Uh, yes, Madam Chair, and Supervisor, this is Minister Preparatory. <coughs> we have actual contracts to fulfill. Uh, we also have a, a projection of uh, contracts that we need to be prepared to fill. Uh, this was also part of the overall state-to-state -state competition. Uh, other states 
uh, put significant effort into designing buildings uh, in part of their proposal and timelines for those buildings completion. Uh, so it was a very significant part of the competitive package uh, that allowed us to study. So you need that timeline in order to be successful. Yeah. Is this for balloon production? Yes. You have, uh, you have a bunch of balloons on order. So it, it's primary balloon, uh, primarily balloon production. Also, the hardware that the balloons carry, the communication and remote sensing packages are also integrated in that facility. That's the real thing. Yes. Yes. But you're not producing that there at the facility, the payloads. You're producing balloons, correct? Uh, Madam Chairwoman, uh, Board of Supervisors, Administrator Barry, we're producing uh, both the balloons and the payloads. Uh, the, the payloads that control the balloon, that we communicate with the balloon. Uh, we have uh, actually begun to uh, talk with other organizations in Tucson, a great beyond Arizona Optical, about also producing aspects of the payloads, communication systems. Uh, our intention is to source the entire payload insofar as possible locally. Uh, and uh, in fact, we have uh, more uh, meetings with uh, Great thing coming up very soon. We've had several successful meetings here uh, and meetings with them and customers uh, in DC. So, this is a, a very vibrant opportunity uh, to co locate these two organizations and actually have uh, Great Theon create aspects of the payloads along with us. Uh, so, it's uh, both is occurring and part of the facilities allowing for that final integration and test of the payload uh, before uh, we fly it from, uh, from uh, the launch pad here at Spaceport Tucson. Thank you. Okay, um, <clears throat> um, the one thing I'd like to know and for the audience to understand, in year 19, this company has the ability to purchase this facility from the county for $10, is that correct? There's a, there's a uh, purchase agreement option in year 19. Uh, Madam Chair and Supervisor Miller, if you look at the option closely, it goes from six months uh, into year nine to 17. Right. And then that expires. The second option is really to basically buy, but give us notice in six months ahead to actually purchase it uh, for $10, uh, which would be the term of the 20 years. But at that point in time, uh, they have paid $23.5 million in rent. But that's paying us back for the loan that we're taking out to purchase, to build this facility, correct? That's yes. not pretty Madam, Madam Chair and Supervisor Miller, the aggregate principal and interest on the loan is $20.3 million. The payback on the rent is $23.5 million. That's if we get 4% on the cops. The, the assumption is 4% on the cops. <coughs> yes, Madam <coughs> Chair, the assumption is 4%. I guess the market is below that today. And uh, the, another question I have for you, what is the asset that we're using to secure these cops? It is um, the land itself or other, other county facilities. Okay, so you haven't identified the county facilities because we've mortgaged our parking garages, the courthouse, the jail. Um, what facilities? You haven't even identified what facilities we're going to mortgage. We've identified it. We'll have a package of financing coming to the board in, in two meetings. Okay. All right. Um, you know, um, as, as I got this on Friday, five less than five days, and I'd like to quote Supervisor Bronson being very upset in the paper about the read to horse racing contract only having five days to review. Um, I think you can understand my frustration if you're going to companies to speak to them. They have a lot more than five days. Whether this is anything to do with you, um, it's a communication issue within the county, obviously. Um, approving this contract today without performing the due diligence that the voters deserve. Um, it, and, and ensuring we're not in violation of the gift clause, which I think we are, and procurement statutes. I don't know how we can invoke an emergency, but we are. Um, I um, just have to say the taxpayers of Pima County just spoke loudly and clearly. They rejected the economic development portion of the Sonoran Corridor along with taxpayer funded tech parks. By 60% voted no. And this was just two months ago. They rejected tourism by an even higher rate. And this is Tourism. There, this was 190,000 voters in this community. This is disregarding the will of the voters, 
telling them you have no respect for their wishes, and ramming it down their throats. Pima County taxpayers deserve better. Picking winners and losers will deter private sector investment in Pima County. Why would a private sector investor come in here and risk not knowing who the next winner will be? It could be their competition. Um, one of the things people need to know as well is this company is already here, located at the airport in Pima County. And I assume you're paying rent at your existing facility. Funding a startup business by providing this building for which they have the option of purchasing for $10 is competing with the private sector. The private sector has over 4 million vacant space of industrial space here in Pima County already. It'll discourage private investors and developers from coming here. Uh, we're setting ourselves up to be a taxpayer-funded economy, and maybe people are good with that. Imposing this level of risk, because I haven't seen anything, and I certainly read the report of the uh, company out of Phoenix that had all kinds of disclaimers and said they couldn't even be sued over any of the uh, information that they provided. They were very nervous about this report, obviously. Um, New Mexico Spaceport, what I researched on it, it's a $250 million failure. There's a legislator actually putting up a, a, a legislation to try to put it up for sale. It's empty. x in Texas, Midland, Texas, $10 million investment. That one isn't off the ground. We're not even funding our core services like roads and paying our sheriff's deputies the step increases they were promised when they were hired. Yet we're choosing to invest borrowed monies, borrowed monies. Taxpayers are, are mortgaging their assets to borrow this money in an extremely risky enterprise with individuals at the helm who were part of the biosphere experiment, which failed. The taxpayers of this community deserve better. They deserve to be listened to. And I'm certain the taxpayers won't forget what happens here today. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. Supervisor Carroll and Supervisor Elias. I don't believe that either of you deserved that. You're obviously pioneers and successful in many other ventures. We understand your track record. We understand the motive. Uh, it's profit based. We're grateful that you're here. I'd like to go ahead and let Supervisor Elias take uh, his question or comment and say thank you again for being here. Thank you, Supervisor Carroll, Supervisor Elias. Well, <clears throat> 136,000 feet up in the air, pretty far away from a good bowl of menudo. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about going up there that far up in space. Huh? Probably not very good, but. Let's talk about these jobs and when they're going to happen and how real all of that is. Because that comes back to the contracts that you currently have in place, if I understand things correct, please. Yeah, so our job growth uh, is going to be pretty rapid. We, we anticipate just within the next few short years, about four years, we will be uh, at 400 people. Uh, right here in Tucson, uh, and those jobs are coming from, as you say, uh, the contracts, um, and uh, we already have a contract with, a $45 million contract with NASA, and we're flying payloads for them already, uh, and other customers that we are already um, uh, have contracts with, universities, Lumber Grumman, other aerospace companies. Um, we have an extremely vigorous interest in our product, it is extremely unique. Uh, we have conversations going with uh, aerospace companies, uh, government entities all around the world now that uh, are really seeing the benefits of this particular product for the reasons that, that uh, my colleague Tabor was uh, uh, giving earlier. Um, this is uh, an extremely um, unique product. Uh, we are really leading uh, the, um, the whole emergence of this new economy in the stratosphere. And uh, that, that is where these, these jobs are going to be deployed in, in working in this exciting arena in, in space. Now, Supervisor Miller, my 
my friend here, um, has made some, some tough accusations about us not doing our due diligence on this, on this matter that's before us now. Um, I, I know Mr. Huckleberry had to leave for a few minutes. Um, Mr. Moffat, you've worked on this thing for how long now, sir? Uh, Madam Chair and uh, Supervisor Lee. Please speak up, John. To the board. Get closer, is that better? Yeah. That's fine. Uh, we've been actually working on this for well over at nine to 10 months. Um, in, in different phases. So we have gone through their employment, uh, the staging and the ramping up of the employment and, uh, and, and evaluated that we feel it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. And so you'd say that uh, your work in, in, in researching this and working together with this group has been good and, and uh, actually meaningful and, and not just uh, monkeying around like Supervisor Miller suggests? <laughs> Um, I have an MBA and I uh, was in pri the private sector for over 40 years. Uh, I've read a lot of financial statements um, I've, and I've looked at a lot of projections. Uh, we felt that there, you know, the, the number of contracts they have, the marketing they have, the, 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 the folks that, that um, they're dealing with, and the growth of this industry are, uh, are credible and it, 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 they can deliver these kind of manufacturing jobs uh, and engineering, but the manufacturing jobs will be the, the majority of them. If you look at the growth, the, you know, once they start, the manufacturing jobs come very early in the, uh, in the process. So we, we felt that it was a good, good thing for the community and especially out on that side of town. Thank you, Mr. Moffitt. So despite the fact that these folks have been, you know, doing this work and, and contributing to our economy and showing success in their business, you know, it, it, we come here and I know we have a higher level of scrutiny that we have to provide to the taxpayer and I think that's good. But uh, I don't think we should be subject to, to negativity that's, that's uh, frankly misplaced, I think, because I think you folks are trying to do something good. But uh, well, guarantees about those jobs are important to me, and I think they're certainly important to this community. So I'd like to hear from you on that subject, please. Again. Uh, sure, uh, uh, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board, Mr. Herkelberry. Uh, so these jobs are obviously based in contracts that we have and we are, we are gaining. These are jobs uh, for which you do a lot of training. There's months of training that go into these jobs. Uh, to make, uh, it's a very high-tech operation to make these balloons that uh, take payloads as high as they do. Uh, and we're uh, attracting people from the community and training them right now in the new manufacturing operations that we're conducting right now. So these are, uh, we're also working with the uh, uh, FEMA Community College on uh, training of our employees. Uh, and these are employees that really come from our community and are able to uh, have what are very fulfilling jobs for them. They manufacture vehicles that literally go to the edge of space uh, and they are uh, not only manufacturing them, but they're conducting the launches of these uh, systems. It's, uh, it's great to see the look on the faces of these people that, that have uh, been trained and able to do this kind of work here in our community. So these are good opportunities for local employment as opposed to bringing people in from out of town. <coughs> yes. <clears throat> we uh, uh, really don't plan to bring anybody in from out of town if you don't absolutely have to, and certainly all the manufacturing jobs are uh, all local. Once in a while we have to bring in an engineering specialist, but really I think you can count on these jobs being jobs that uh, come out of our community uh, and to employ people in our community. We, we love this community, as we said earlier, we have lived here for decades, uh, and uh, it's very gratifying to me to see people, especially in the area around uh, the south of the airport, uh, able to do this kind of work and facility now that we're uh, uh, beginning to overflow from it. So it's, uh, I think what we're going to see is also the beginning of momentum in uh, the south side of Tucson, that the, this is the kind of project that attracts other projects. And uh, I, I think actually Administrator Huckleberry has other meetings today, uh, even. And uh, establishing momentum is an incredibly important part of economic development. And I think you'll find uh, uh, a positive vote 
today is going to be a nationwide press. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I would just say that, because I kind of like to hear from speakers at this point, I don't, I don't know, but I, I, you know, we've heard a lot of uh, speechifying here from, from my friend Supervisor Miller, and I understand her concerns, and I, I share some of those concerns, quite frankly, but um, we have to be positive about our community, too, and we have to take steps forward to make things grow, and to understand that, we have to look to our own past and people who have committed to Tucson in the past and help build this community into what it is today, rather than sitting around and criticizing everything to death, as opposed to uh, being analytical and spending nine or ten months examining a project and working together with a place that has other investors and working with folks who are already busy doing that work and have 40 examples of, 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 of liftoffs, I guess you'd call them. I don't want to call them blastoffs because they're not quite blasting off. It's kind of blush. But, um, odd as it may sound, we have to recognize that our future is changing and that technology is changing and the world is changing and we need to be a part of that as well. And Tucson has always been a part of that. And certainly Raytheon and its precursors, Hughes and others, um, had the courage to do that with a lot of help from government, to be quite honest with you, over the years. That is absolutely the truth. Sometimes they don't like to talk about that so much because it sounds real good to say you, you just did everything on your own and lifted yourself up by your own bootstraps, but you know, there's a lot of horsemen in here today and they know what's on those boots when you're lifting them up. <laughs> it's pretty dang hard to be able to do that. So uh, I give them some credit and I, I give you some credit for doing that. But, but uh, I would say be careful about getting caught up in the dialogue that is out of a particular political playbook rather than looking at the reality of our own community and how we have found success in the past and ultimately how we're going to build our community into the future. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, and I appreciate your words. The reality is, as we move forward in the 21st, global econ 21st century global economy, these public-private partnerships are what fuel the economy. And we know in Tucson that our future is based in aerospace and defense and biotech, and this fits right in with that future. And those communities that don't invest are the communities that are losing population. And if we don't invest, we won't be able to fix our roads. We won't be able to reward our employees. Um, we have to understand we have a number of balancing acts to perform. And if we don't advance in terms of economic development, then we can't do anything else. So. Right. One more thing that I, I thought of as you were speaking, Sheriff Johnson, because um, I, think, I think what you said is absolutely true, but there was also some questions about legality in all of this, so I'd like to ask our council to take a uh, comment on, on all of this. Economic development as defined under ARS seems to me to have pretty broad implications um, <clears throat> that would indicate to us that this is not a violation of the gift clause in any way, shape, or form. So, uh, Tom, uh, counsel, excuse me, Mr. Weaver, I guess I'm supposed to be all polite with the lawyers, it's better than I But I'll tell you, it works better in executive session. But um, please, if you could comment on that. Madam Chair, Supervisor Elias, um, as we've said before, the board does have express statutory authority to engage in economic development activities. Um, and I think that statute's even referenced in the contract in this case. Um, in terms of the gift clause, the gift clause basically says that you have to have a public purpose and that you have to be getting um, something at or near fair market value for the efforts. Um, that's a question for the board in terms of its evaluation of the deal. Certainly if it goes the distance, it seems to have those qualities. Um, but that's a policy question for the board. The, the law on the gift clause is really quite simple. Um, and so um, that's just something that the board has to evaluate in each and every deal. Okay, so uh, direct public um, purpose. John, please help me out here. Give me some information here. Because I believe there is a direct public purpose associated with this. And, and I, I'd like you to enumerate that. That way it's not just 
one of these elected guys up here talking. Uh, Chairman Bronson, now members of the board, and uh, Supervisor Elias. Uh, the, the, the purpose, really, that we're after, our, uh, the main focus for the county's economic development program is jobs. And this brings a number of high quality jobs, as well as manufacturing jobs, and not that manufacturing is not high quality. But we have some engineering jobs, but we also have manufacturing jobs that cover a broad range and spectrum. Um, the 400 jobs is important. Uh, the economic impact study that was done does does talk about a, a, over a billion dollars of impact on this uh, project. Over what period of time? Excuse me. Over what period of time, Mr. Long? So, it, it was 3.2 billion, I believe, over 20 years. 3.2 billion over 20 years. Any other comments you want to make about that? Well, the other, the other part of this is. The, we're, we're trying to grow, as uh, Supervisor Bronson mentioned, we're trying to grow the aerospace industry. Uh, that, that's a, you know, we're very successful. We have over 200 companies in Pima County that are focused in aerospace. Uh, we can develop that uh, industry extensively, and that's one of the focuses that we have in developing this business park south of Raytheon. Uh, it's got to be compatible with Raytheon's work. But we think that there's opportunity to bring in more high tech and attract this, these kinds of jobs. But it's all about jobs. That's the main, the main attraction. Um, thank you. Mr. Huckleberry, how many years has Raytheon been here in our community? Better. I know that might exceed your years of, of wisdom or the your amount of years you've been alive, but I'm hoping you got an answer there for me. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Supervisor Elias, um, a um, realtor here in Tucson called Roy Drachman attracted uh, use here in the in the 40s, and they've been here ever since. And uh, they now grow uh, to Raytheon uh, and their series of acquisitions and mergers with General Dynamics and others. And they now have over 11,000. Uh, private employees who operate uh, in Raytheon missile systems uh, located headquarters here in Tucson in two different or three different locations. And through that time, um, we've worked with them to allow them um, to not pay property taxes and have an agreement to do a payment in lieu of those taxes for the personal property that they have on that on that particular site of, of their main plant here. Would you say that's been a good economic deal for Pima County since the 1940s? Uh, Madam Chair and, and Supervisor Elias, uh, their valuation of, uh, of, their, of their possessory interest and their personal property tax is uh, probably over, depending upon who you listen to, uh, whether the assessor or their uh, property uh, folks in Raytheon are between about 40 to 50 million dollars a year in taxable uh, assets. And the same thing occurs, is going to occur here. Uh, they, uh, this particular issue in the, in the statute on, on government uh, leases deals with an exemption for aviation, and that might apply here. If it doesn't, then we'll pay same property tax uh, as a possessory interest in this property or anybody else would. So when you when you look at those things and when you talk about economic impacts, the impacts are 3.5 million dollars over 20 years um, between direct and indirect jobs, 840, and then and so the whole purpose here is to grow export-based employment within this community and at the same time expand the tax base. This will expand the tax base because of suppliers, because of people buying homes. Uh, because ultimately, once this property becomes purchased, it, it goes on the tax base, and so it goes in as an asset. And so when you, when you look at that in the economic uh, analysis that was performed in detail on this particular property, uh, Pima County uh, will yield over the 20-year period $10.7 million in taxes. Um, the local jurisdictions will uh, obtain about uh, $16.4 million in taxes. and so. You know, this is part of the equation to expand the tax base. Okay. And I think that's a really good answer. Did you want to add to that? Oh, I was going to say, I think that's a pretty good answer. And I, I think it probably shows that there has been, in fact, a lot of due diligence done on this project that has properly analyzed this situation. And, and you know, 
There's parts of this proposal that, that, that sound like a little bit of pie in the sky. I don't know how many of you saw that movie they made about Howard Hughes. He looked kind of nutty in that movie too, but I guess they found a lot of success here in Southern Arizona, if you think about it, you know? And, and we've been the beneficiaries of that, and our children have been the beneficiaries of that, because while uh, they were injecting that money into our community, and mind you, I don't necessarily like the business that they're all in. I'll be very upfront with you about that, because that is in me in my heart. But while they've been injecting all that money into our community and turning out a product that's uh, important to the country, their children have been going to school and educating themselves and attending the university. And I know a lot of people whose children have gone to school because their parents had a better job in life. And certainly that's what my dad was about when he joined his union, was trying to make better wages. And, and I hope that you'll entertain uh, or, and accept uh, folks who might want to organize workers at your place someday. I don't expect you to answer that right now because, boy, there'd be a real chill in the room then. You know? but, but I'm not ashamed to say it. Hell no, I'm not ashamed to say it at all. I think it's important that we have good jobs and, and that people be paid well to do their jobs. So, so I'll go ahead and say that too as a part of what I consider to be economic development. But I, 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 I just went on for a while because I, I think we hear a lot from, from, from one source that again is just promoting a particular political perspective as opposed to being as analytical as we should be. Uh, I, I'd like to hear from our speakers at this point if we possibly could. So we can turn Supervisor Carroll has asked um, to be recognized and we'll hear from Supervisor. Thank you once again, both of you, for attending today. I, I thought you were very credible witnesses. I think that, uh, you know, we all know what non-disclosure agreements are about. And um, I've been happy that uh, I wasn't privy early because there's, you know, back to uh, a long time uh, record of trying to keep things under uh, the radar as far as economic development. But, would affect the other communities where you're being, being courted for, for a, a relocation. I'm glad that you're here, and again, I say that you were cross-examined. I think you've fared very well. You haven't seen anything yet. Hold back, because here comes the speakers. And uh, for the record, because you mentioned Roswell earlier, uh, there might be some conspiracy theories coming your way. And you said that your grandfather had a propeller at the Pima Air Museum. Your family's lifelong, you've been involved in aviation and related industries? Uh, yes, uh, Chairman, uh, Board of Supervisors, Administrator. Uh, my great-grandfather uh, made propellers for the Wright Brothers. And if you go to the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, you will see a collection of my great-grandfather's propellers. He was the first one to make machines that carved with complex shapes of duct curved propellers uh, that worked in order to uh, make airplanes more effective. They won the early speed races. Uh, they, the first planes to cross the Atlantic did so in my great grandfather's propellers. Uh, and innovation and science has been really in my family ever since. Uh, and uh, we're very proud to be continuing that tradition of successful aerospace development. I believe you will be as, as successful as your great-grandfather. Now, um, when it comes back to those conspiracies, your family, have any of your family, or were they involved in staging the 1969 lunar landing in a back studio in Hollywood? Just answer yes or no. May I the question? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> But I, I think that that's a very good way to end your testimony. Brace yourselves, as I said. Uh, you never held back the facts, and I'm grateful for your attendance today. I appreciate it, and uh, you've got a, a great future at Pima County. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Carroll. Now we'll proceed to the speakers. Thank you. Thank both of you, and we're going to proceed to the speakers. Um, remind speakers you have three minutes in order to abide by the rules of civility. Keith von Heineken.
Mr. Byrne, proceed. It'd be nice to have y'all here. The two out five are missing. Chuck's missing. This is the most important. Yes, How can I start? Please proceed. I have been ordered to proceed. My name is Keith Van Heineken. My grandfather, John Van Heineken, and my great uncle, Bill Van Heineken, worked for a company, not a company, it's a government entity. It's called NACA, the predecessor to NASA. I studied plasma and ion drive as a child. All I see here is a bunch of supposedly very successful people demanding taxpayer dollars from me. Well, I say this, here's my wallet. Come and take it. I say, hell no, just as Richard would say. Hell no. The fact that you can buy this property back at the end of the term for $10 is a joke. The swipes and alley from Richard, the known communist and illegal alien supporter, who I have on film, saying some pretty vile things, might just want to get a clue. Poor, oh, you're on YouTube, dude. <clears throat> well, when it comes to Mr. Huckleberry working in the dark, I'm sorry, you don't have a business plan. You can't go to a bank and get a loan like that. I've been a land surveyor for a long time. I'm retired now. I've worked on hundred million dollar jobs on a regular basis. Those people got their money. You know where they got it from? It wasn't the county taxpayer. You're broke. You're in debt. Your roads stink. You couldn't make a good decision to save your life. Why? Because we have four out of five representatives to do whatever care Huckleberry says. I'll use these words. You know why? Because civility means this to me. I do not rape, pillage, or steal. You all are stealing. So therefore, you are uncivil. And no, none of the members will look me in the eye. It's amazing. Except for Holly. Oh, Richard will. He knows who I am. The problem is, the stupid who voted you in will eventually realize that you've crucified them on the tree of oil. Debt is slavery. Maybe we can bring back tar and feathering, pitchforks and torches. Personally, I love the weather here. Can't stand most of the people. That's the only reason I'm here. Here's my wife. We have to turn some more stuff, don't worry, right? And yes, I was born in Harrogate, Yorkshire, England. I got rid of my accent when I was four years old when I came to the States because I was an army brat. I'm an American first. And Americans don't like being tax slaves. Get over yourselves. Brad Jones. Good morning and thank you for your time. Thank you to the Board of Supervisors and uh, thank you for the very thorough report that was published. It was a little light reading on the weekend, 83 pages, I think. Um, for Mr. Huckleberry, there is light. <laughs> And uh, I'd also like to thank the executives from Worldview. Um, I'm Brad Johns. I was at 5935 North Community Delcon Day. I hold a bachelor's degree in economics. I have a master's degree in business administration, both from the University of Arizona. I had a 32-year career with IBM, where I reviewed a lot of business plans. I developed revenue forecasts. I looked at new technologies and tried to assess the likelihood of their acceptance by the marketplace. And also in that career, I had the chance to work with a number of aerospace companies, both as a supplier and also as a consultant. So I'd offer a few perspectives to the Board of Supervisors for your consider consideration today as you vote. Uh, this is kind of a risky project. There were some comments uh, uh, Mr. Huckleberry made in the paper. Yeah, there is, there's risk on this project. And I would look at it from a couple perspectives, having been involved in some uh, early life cycle projects myself. Number one, there's a substantial 
market risk associated with the commercialization, clearly they're talking about the consumer business of sending people into suborbital sub space at $75,000 a pop. There's, there's really no data that says how big is this market, how many people are going to buy. Uh, there's probably some proxies you can take a guess at, look at Rolls Royce sales. But uh, that's, a, that's certainly a risk associated with this. It's not really clear what the size of this marketplace is. And then while the balloon it sounds like a proven technology with a substantial uh, record, there's also uh, the whole task of coming up with the paramount technology for the safe landing as well as the capsule and then the integration <coughs> test of that complete system. And that's going to be a, a risky, time consuming and probably difficult process. So when you look at the risk elements, it's highly likely that this project is going to run late, it's going to go over budget. And the question quickly comes to how much of that risk can be absorbed by worldview and how much of that risk is going to be absorbed by the Pima County taxpayer in the form of getting a building back down the middle of the desert. So there's a lot, a lot of people that take uh, these kind of opportunities, venture capital firms. This probably is better suited for that kind of business as opposed to the Pima County taxpayer. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Bogart. Adriana Morkirkin. I am here once again in front of you, and I want to start off by first saying, practice what you preach. You are a total hypocrite to call for civility when you don't do it yourself. You have a supervisor, Ray Carroll, who does not even, who, who does this speech before we come up and speak. And he's the biggest one at fault because he is my supervisor and he's always preaching the 11th command, the wrong ready 11th command, not to speak that in the public. I had a lot of things to say, one of them being that he doesn't speak for me. He doesn't speak for the taxpayers. I don't take anything away from this Mr. McCallum and Mrs. Pointer. What they've done, they wait. But they have said that this is a profit-based business is what Ray Carroll said, okay? This is their business. They want to expand globally, but they want to do it with our tax dollars. They're coming to our community to take to expand their business. Well, I'm all for aerospace. You know what? Apparently, there's not enough private investors who believe in your project. Maybe they've already gotten a sense of the other fellow projects in other states, and the closest one being here in next door to New Mexico. Midland, my home, my, my state. Don't use my state or my Midland, Texas as an example. What you guys do here is irresponsible. I've been here 16 years. 16 years you have misspent our money. You have abused your positions. And once again, they've already made contracts and they don't even have the money to go ahead and do this. So now they're on a timeline and you're supposed to expect us to say that it's okay? Well, you know what? All good things must come to an end. And your days are numbered because people spoke loudly this last time. And while you do what you do here, just remember, you are hypocrites and you are despicable people for what you do with our taxpayer money. Thank you for the opportunity to let me speak. Uh, I'm going to make this pretty darn short. Uh, I do oppose the. I don't oppose the project itself. I oppose the taxpayer uh, being financing the project. Uh, a lot of this is a high risk venture, obviously, because the people expect high rewards, and the two go together. So I don't believe, just like the Oro Valley uh, project, that it's right for a high risk venture capital to be the burden of the taxpayer. And the only thing that I can see good coming out of this, using taxpayer money, is the fact that people are going to be Uh, the uh, that, that come November, the people will be willing to make change. 
because 60 percent of the you know, the voters this, uh, in this last election turned down similar projects of using taxpayer money to finance for not for-profit businesses which are not charities and I think that the repercussion will be similar against the current commission uh, uh, supervisors as it was with those with those bonds. <coughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Justin Williams. <coughs> Madam Chair, um, members of the board, my name is Justin Williams. I'm a resident of Pima County. Uh, I also serve as CEO of Startup Tucson, uh, but today I'm speaking on my own personal behalf. Uh, I am the father of a nine-year-old son uh, who attends uh, school in the TUSD school district. Um, he is an aspiring scientist and engineer and entrepreneur. Um, he is inspired uh, by the work that, that I do and he sees around him and the, the work of people like Tabor and Jane uh, who are investing in uh, one of the more ambitious, amazing, inspiring programs that I think our community has ever seen. Um, think of the space program and the impact that that had on the youth of our community. We're launching a spaceport in Tucson. Um, there's a, there are a great deal of, of elements uh, to this, and I think it's been discussed repeatedly. Um, but one of the things that I think is important for everybody to understand, <clears throat> research by the Kauffman Foundation for Entrepreneurship out of Kansas City showed that 100% of all net new jobs created in the U.S. in the last 30 years came from high growth startups like Worldview Enterprises. That's the driver of our economy in Tucson. We lose these kinds of companies all the time. They've been competed for already by Texas and Florida. States that have natural competitive advantages over us. The reason that they stay here is the same reason that Tom Brown uh, kept Burr Brown here and the same reason that uh, the, the Tom Grogan kept Montana Medical Systems here, which is that they're from here, they care about our community, and they're willing to invest in the growth and the future of our community and building the next Tucson. And I appreciate all of your leadership, every single member of this community, every single single member of, uh, opposing or, or supporting us. Um, our leadership collectively as a community is critical to growing our future. Uh, this is an important decision that I think will have lasting impact on our community. Uh, and I, I greatly appreciate your, your support in uh, moving this project forward. I think it has huge potential in any number of ways in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Good morning. My name is Carol Kovalik, and I am a Pima County resident. Pardon me for mispronouncing your last name. I'm sorry? Pardon me for mispronouncing your last name. Um, I, I, while I am not a regular attendee at these meetings, I've been here in the past, I am often appalled at some of the behavior that I see at the board in front of me as I sit as a, a member of the audience, and I am extremely upset with a comment disparaging me as a speaker coming to this podium in my presentation to you today. Given some of the Pima County uh, past adventures, I'm not sure a, if you build it, they will come, uh, applies here. Yes, kudos to all of us who have been a part of, uh, involved in, and behind what the Worldview Enterprise executives told us that we should be very proud of, that we were the ones selected. We were all a little upset when we weren't selected for the battery factory not that long ago. However, um, yes, it'll grow our, income, our economic investing, and it will increase our tax code Economic development, non-disclosure, code names, be classified to some, if not all, supervisors. I, I question some of the validity of that. How does a code name get declassified and not in front of all of you? That is not correct, or to me, or really above the board. Um, a deadline to be spoken to later puts a, a, a burden on us to approve something that is really outside of today's meeting. Why are we on their deadline? I recently went and saw The Martian, and The Martian was a great movie. It, 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 it rallied everybody behind us. And yes, we want to be part of The Martian experience again, and a part of the tang experience for the space exploration. But Pima County as a spaceport may not be, in fact, a part of a warranty consideration today. 
It, I believe that more time needs to be allocated to allow for the public to vote to determine voter support for the spending of these funds, to allow for the investigation into other space force considerations, which was touched on here briefly today, the success and the construction issues around the New Mexico spaceport located southeast of Truth or, Truth or Consequences and north of Los Cruces, issues basic such as groundwater availability, uh, lodging, meals, Wi-Fi service. I also didn't hear much regarding the fact that we are going to have to support, unless it's a private industry, and they will support the ongoing police and fire and some of the other infrastructure that will come with a project of this nature. <clears throat> I ask you to be a little bit further consideration um, to the expenditure of these funds and allocating towards this venture. Um, due diligence is important. And with taxpayers' money and concern, I don't think you can ever overdo due diligence. Thank you for my Thank you. Time. Thank you. Please sit down. You need not come back to the mm -hmm. Good morning. I am Joe Snell. Uh, I'm the president of Sun Corridor Incorporated. We are, for your reminder, a uh, coalition of public and private uh, CEOs uh, working to the betterment of the, uh, the economy in Southern Arizona. I'll be brief. On behalf of the 57 member board of directors, which represents about 80% of all employment uh, in Pima County, we encourage you to approve this lease purchase for Worldview. We've worked for quite a few months with Worldview. Um, we, we believe this is an outstanding company with outstanding leadership. We think with a previous track record, which will lead us to success. It's no secret that the Great Recession has been very, very hard on, on, on this county and, and, and this community. We relied for years on home building as our economic engine. And I think we all learned the hard lessons uh, that we needed to diversify this econ economy. And Worldview does just that. It offers high skill opportunities to our people. It offers high wages to our people. It has a significant economic impact. And it also offers us a future opportunity to leverage this project with future projects. I'm encouraged because we, as we deal with companies from the outside looking in, we see a very robust pipeline. But I have to tell you, they're looking at us. And they're looking to see if we'll invest in our own. And they might question us if we can't invest in our, one of our own, uh, that they might not take a, a strong loan. So I thank you for your consideration, your service, and uh, encourage you to support uh, World Team. So I don't think you'll be disappointed. Mr. Snell, just a quick question. Um, Huntsville uh, got a contract that right beyond Tucson, the missile systems Tucson did not get. Did Huntsville invest? Uh, did the state invest in uh, in bringing that contract to Huntsville? If you mean the state of Alabama, the state of Alabama, yes, the local Huntsville, the local governments. Um, nearly three hundred million dollars worth of investment. They built a building for 75 million, uh, excuse me, I, I recheck it, but 150 million dollars for 300 jobs. Uh, yes, a 75 million dollar building. And I might add, um, you know, there's a pretty big outcry in this community when Huntsville was lost. Um, an outcry that, that we as locals didn't do enough to retain those jobs. We don't want to let another opportunity uh, go by and where we look back in five years and say, boy, we should have done this before. And then again, just as a follow-up, that was one example we lost because we didn't have the investment. But in your experience as CEO of an economic development organization, and not just here in Tucson, but I think that's been your career, um, how are communities, what's the magic recipe for communities being successful in lowering the, the high wage jobs to their regions? Well, it's a combination of things. Um, I believe talent drives all markets. 
decisions and uh, communities that uh, have a high quality of life, they're, they're good skills, labor force, good available properties, um, and are aggressive will win the deal at the end of the day. You know, we just look at, and, and this is a competitive process. This was a competitive uh, process for this uh, superior company. Just last week, if you read the Wall Street Journal, General, Motors, General Electric moved their headquarters from um, Connecticut to Boston. It represents 800 jobs, and there are about $150 million put on the table for that. So communities have to be aggressive. And by aggressive, you mean they have to invest? You have to invest. You have to invest taxpayer dollars. Indeed. Thank you. Thank Madam you. Chair? Supervisor. I have a question for Mr. Snow. I believe it was Raytheon that built their building down there for $300 million. They got, I believe, 2 or $3 million, but they had to meet employment targets at certain salaries before they got the 2 or $3 million. Raytheon built their own building. With help from the government. You're incorrect. Thank you. That concludes our speakers. Uh, again, I remind you all we are on item five of the addendum agenda. Items one through five uh, staff recommendations. What's the pleasure of the board on this item? Madam Chair. Supervisor. Madam Chair, I, I move the item. Uh, all the items as, as uh, indicated before. As, as recommended by staff. There's a motion and a second on the floor to approve item five, and under that, items one, two, three, four, A and B, and five. Roll call, please. Supervisor Carroll? Aye. Supervisor Elias? Aye. Supervisor Miller? No. Supervisor Valadez? Madam Chair, may I explain my vote? Proceed. Madam Chair, um, today's vote, uh, you know, we've heard a lot in the discussion that you've heard, uh, and I think we need to ask ourselves as a community, could we have benefited if we gotten the Tesla battery not mega factory? Yes or no? Were we upset when we lost the IBM plant and jobs? Yes or no? Looking back more recently, looking at the, the uh, line that was sent to Huntsville from Raytheon, were those jobs that we could have used? Yes or no? You know, when I was a student at the University of Arizona in the College of Engineering, uh, as most of you know, I'm, I have a degree in engineering. I interned at IBM, and I saw how many jobs were there. But more importantly, I also saw the alternatives and the options. And I will tell you that one of the things that has scared me, and I've been very public uh, about my concern, as has been several <coughs> members of this board, is the loss that we as a community continue to experience from our young people. Our young people that go to our schools, our community colleges, our universities, and get these degrees, the very people that will keep our community vibrant, sustainable, and going in a very positive and forward direction. And those young people are leaving. You ask yourself, why are they leaving? They're leaving because, frankly, as an engineer, I will tell you that if I didn't want to go to work for Raytheon, where was I going to go? There wasn't any diversity. There weren't any other companies. But you know what? I had alternatives because I had a degree in engineering. You know, part of what I've stated before is I think that is a failure in our past leadership. That we didn't say, look, this is wrong. This is not where we want to go. Today, this board sits here and says, yes, you are right. That is not where we want to go. There's a saying that defines insanity as doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. You know what? This board is not going to do the same things because those things didn't work. We're going to take a different direction because, frankly, we need different results. And with that, Madam Chair, I vote aye. Supervisor, thank you. Uh, and thank you for those comments. Um, you're right. We need to invest in our future. Uh, we, can't cons we can't continue to say no, no, no. It's time to say yes. And with that, I vote yes. Motion carries four to one. 